The Dating Show, brought to you by alderdatingonline.com. In this edition of The Dating Show, shoes, as well as providing a practical solution to walking, a new study says they reveal a lot about your sexual performance. Mm. And we hear from a man who claims to be able to tell whether you're worth dating by looking at your fridge. And we highlight another success story from alderdatingonline.com, but we also hear a rather funny story about an angry man. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. But first, Bill Clinton. I want you to listen to me. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. I think he was talking about you there, Eliza. (laughs) I don't know. We did have a passing moment in the bathroom. (laughs) Really? (laughs) No. Okay. Now, Bill Clinton is an expert in eye contact. I quote Scully from The X-Files or actress Gillian Anderson, who met Bill on a talk show. Now, she said during an interview on the David Letterman show that his appeal was lingering eye contact. When he meets you he takes your hand and makes eye contact after he leaves he moves on to the next person. He looks back at you and seals the deal Gillian said when she got home she expected to have a message from him but didn't. I mean that is so sexy. Do you think Bill Clinton's sexy? But his tactics are so sexy I would be drawn in Really? Yeah. I want you to listen to me I did not have sexual relations with that woman (laughs) (laughs) come on carry on Now, polishing your shoes may be the best way to find a partner. A survey by Giacomo has found that 80% of Brits believe that great footwear is the best way to create a good impression. Rachel Richards, who took part in the survey, couldn't agree more. These boots are made for walking And that's just what they'll do One of these days these boots are gonna walk all over you one of those stats that sort of um, is really interesting is, um, yeah. you know, one in 20 British women yeah. say you can tell how good a man is in bed from looking at his shoes. Really? Yeah, no, it's true. If you, you know, if I was out in a club and I, I looked down and saw a guy wearing scruffy trainers, I, I suppose I'd just think, well, if they didn't bother with their footwear, they probably wouldn't bother in bed either. <laughs> And, um, I mean, good footwear is is rated higher than good looks and also fashion. Yeah, it's true, because I think that's one thing that men forget. So they get, you know, they put their outfit on and look cool in jeans and, you know, stripy tops or shirts. And then they end up wearing scruffy trainers and ruining the whole thing. When you're out and about yourself, do you look at bloke's shoes? Yeah, definitely. It's probably the first thing that I'd look at. I'd just immediately look down. Yeah, and if they, if the shoes had holes in them or, you know, they were wearing a black suit with brown shoes, I'd just think, oh, you've got no style. I wouldn't go out with them because I wouldn't want to be seen with them. And what are your favourite shoes on a man? My favourite shoes would be probably, you know, I think it's quite probably wearing smart brogues. I think they look really good with smart jeans. What about Uggs, Wellies, sandals and flip-flops? No, a definite turn-off. Definitely. Socks and sandals, wearing wellies when you're not going rambling or working on a farm is just, it's really uncool. I think it makes your feet very sweaty as well. (laughs) Okay. Rachel, what shoes are you wearing? I'm wearing black boots. These boots are made for walking And that's just what they'll do One of these days these boots are gonna walk all over you. Okay, I noticed that you'd actually bought yourself a pair of brogues. Yeah, you have. I know, I know. Anyway, that was Rachel Richards. Mike Jones also took part and was shocked by how influential shoes can be. It probably wouldn't be top of my priorities in terms of what I go for, you know, if I'm going on a date. It would probably be the last thing that I thought about. So it has quite surprised me and sort of thrown, made me a bit worried about what, how I was acting in the past, I guess, really, because, uh, yeah, it's not something I really thought about before. And, I mean, one of the staggering things from um, this survey is that one in 20 British women say they can tell how good a man is in bed from looking at his shoes. (laughs) Yeah, and and it worries me. Does it worry you? (laughs) Well, it does now, yeah. (laughs) It does worry me now. I I don't think it's... uh, Well, I I don't think it's true from my experience, but, um, uh, yeah, it's quite uh, quite surprising. I don't know where they could get that information from. (laughs) I mean, they do say the link between big feet, but uh, I don't know if it... If it carries on to shoes, I don't know. Now, the thing is, um, I'm a size seven. Okay. 
Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> Do you, um, At least, thank goodness you bought yourself a pair of brogues. That's all I can say. <laughs> brogues, size seven. Do you, when you're out, do you look at a man's shoes, though? Absolutely. Do you? And I have to say, the quirkier they are, the better. So, for instance, there's this guy called Nick Worcester, and he wears things like uh, orange DMs. Awesome. Can't beat them. The Dating Show, brought to you by OlderDatingOnline.com. Now, do you have a good heart, Eliza? Oh, well, I think so. Well, did you know, here's an interesting stat, did you know that your heart is the strongest muscle in your body and beats around 100,000 times a day in the average adult? Obviously, your heart rests between each beat, so over a normal lifespan, your heart stands still for about 20 years. I mean, the truth is that when I walk into a room, most people's heart starts beating even faster than that, so... (laughs) <laughs> OK, now let's hear from someone who's found love online at olderdatingonline.com. Before finding her true love, Ursula, as we will call her, had a few funny experiences. I still, to this day, don't actually know what happened. I really, I was chatting away, date was going really well. Going back to the beginning, he was ridiculously good looking, um, very eloquent. Um, you know, we chatted on the phone, chatted on email. You know how you do, you meet someone online and you're not quite sure. I loved his face ridiculously good looking man loved his facial graph um, he was very intelligent very successful so things were going really well chatted on the phone had great <laughs> conversations about you know our children our backgrounds our history that kind of thing met in a lovely pub in Soho and uh, yeah he turned up looking quite gorgeous you know well dressed well turned out loved his Mac that he was wearing went into a lovely pub and um, we were chit-chatting. You know, how you do? A bit of, you know, chit-chat that was flowing easily, you know, lots of eye contact, lots of good body language. You know, I was thinking, this is brilliant. It's going really well. And then I was chatting away, being hilariously funny, and uh, all of a sudden he slammed um, things down on the bar <laughs> abs- to, to the extent that my gin and tonic's built. Absolutely slammed things down the bar, jumped off his bar stool and started shouting at me. Everyone in the pub then stopped drinking and obviously turned to look at us. So I was mortified. I was so embarrassed. And I was thinking, well, I couldn't understand what was going on. I, was, I thought I was being hilariously funny and entertaining. And he literally started shouting whilst banging on the bar. Um, you just can't be serious about anything, can you? You just absolutely can't be serious. Come on, we're going. And I was determined not to be left in the bar. That would just be too... Because everyone was staring. So uh, I shuffled off the bar, you know, grabbed my handbag, you know, grabbed all my bits and pieces and had to follow him out of the bar. And then he was marching, mar- literally marching. <laughs> it was like being with my dad and I'd been really, really naughty. And, and I was kind of half laughing. But, you know, when you could, I, w- I was walking past people trying desperately to get eye contact with people because I really wanted to laugh because this whole situation was so odd. It was so bizarre. So I was half chuckling and half kind of walking with my head bowed and my hands by my side because I felt really naughty. And, and then we were halfway down the tube and he turned to me and said, right, if you can promise me you can behave yourself, we can go back to the bar and continue this date. <laughs> <laughs> Which made me really, really laugh even more. That's when I completely lost it. You have finally found love. I know. On olderdatingonline.com. So I know. So tell us about that. I know. Well, um, I kind of, after my hilariously funny dates, which have got me through a few dinner parties, um, recounting stories, which all my friends love, um, I went back on and met a chap in the summer, in June. And again, I was kind of feeling a little bit, well, you know, I've, I've gone through the process of, you know, talking to people lots online and, and you know, felt a little bit, not jaded, but a little bit wary of, of getting overexcited about meeting someone. So uh, so we emailed for quite a few months, which was which was nice, actually. It was really nice. And got we, we kind of got quite matey and got to know lots of different things about each other's lives and social things and, and that kind of stuff. And then eventually we, we met... And Loved his personality, loved his humour, loved the way that he wrote. And we met and just absolutely hit it off. It was brilliant. So our first date was just the absolute best first date ever. It was lovely. That was Ursula talking about her and the angry man and also the man she now loves. Yeah, well, that, not the angry man. She doesn't love no, him. No, she doesn't. No, no. Let's absolutely not. Let's not. not get confused. No. The Dating Show, brought to you by olderdatingonline.com. Okay, well, next up, we have a guy who claims he's able to tell whether you're worth dating by looking at your fridge. Really? Absolutely. He's a refrigerator dating expert. His name is John Stonehill. Where do we get him from? <laughs> I, have no, I don't know if he was on a fridge magnet somewhere. Who's, I have no idea. <laughs> who's doing the research for this programme? <laughs> when you look at the fridge, you can really tell from 
from what they have in there, from the fridge model itself, what their income is like, what their lifestyle is like, how are they eating, how are they drinking, are they exercising, are they socializing. And because I come from a marketing background, which I found fascinating, because here's the thing, when it comes to dating, nothing is black and white. We all know that, but we're all our own little dating detective in a way. And some people judge people by the, you know, the shoes or by what's on their bookshelves. And when you look in that fridge, you really get a great idea. And so when I look at those brands from a marketing standpoint that's in that fridge, I have a really good idea of like, okay, if some girl has Vedka vodka or let's say Sky vodka in their freezer, there's a good chance they might be reading something like a People magazine or an Us Weekly, where if they have something along the lines of a Kettle One vodka, it's more likely they might be reading something a little more upscale, a little more highbrow, like a Vanity Fair or a GQ. Right, that, that was uh, John Stonehill. Sounds like he was talking to us from his fridge from inside. He sounded like he's in Daft Punk. Yeah, didn't honestly. He? <laughs> talking of Daft Punk, if you want to tune in to lovesongs247.com lots of Daft Punk on there at the moment uh, and lots of other good songs as well. What have you got in your fridge by the way? Uh, well my fridge is absolutely bare is it? I hardly have anything in it yeah I shop every day so I don't you know, I don't have stuff stocked mm. in the fridge really. Probably a few mouldy carrots, something like that. Yeah he'd be horrified if he came to see my fridge. I've just got uh, six cans and a sausage Six cans and a sausage <laughs> The Dating Show, brought to you by OlderDatingOnline.com. 